Oh, you look like you don't want to be on TV. <laughs> it is an exciting day for me today. It is one of the best days of the year. It's, it's Groundhog's Day. Um, can you make your best Groundhog sound? <laughs> 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 Ready for the woodchuck song. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Woodchuck could chuck wood. Wood would woodchuck could chuck wood. Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Everybody, thank you. Welcome to the show, Full House again. Friday, Full House, look at him. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the show, thank you. Let's get started. Let's get started. Welcome to the Jason Show, I'm Jace. Uh, let us start with this, it's Groundhog Day, everybody. You just heard. Eric found the most talented audience members to talk to before the show. That's right. And Punxsutawney Phil did not, did not see his shadow, which means... Oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't, no. no. That's good news. It means early spring. Yeah, that's right. Early spring. Now, Phil... Look, look, that's Pennsylvania. Uh, we, uh, the Jason show currently doesn't air in Pennsylvania. We're working on it. Uh, so we don't care about that. Uh, so we do our own thing here. Uh, Phil isn't the only one looking for a shadow today. Uh, look at this. Photographer Eric emerged from the basement of his house once again to see if he saw a shadow. Let's check this out. Here we go. Here he is. This was shot about 5 o'clock this morning. Does he see a shadow? <laughs> no shadow, everyone. No shadow. There he goes. <laughs> Coincidentally, Groundhog Day is the only day Eric's, uh, Eric's wife allows him out of the house. That's right. Cue the music, Leo. Let's go. Give it up for Kendall Mark, everybody. Hello, love. Hello. How you doing? I'm, I'm very grateful that Eric did not see his shadow. I mean, that could have been terrifying. It could have been. I, I'm actually just glad Eric wore clothes. Yes, That's what I'm, that you know. That too. I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone on the staff, that's all we're grateful for. Yes. Happy Groundhog Day. Is that a thing you say happy to people for? I don't know. I, 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 yeah, like, I don't know if it is. I mean, you know, what do you do? I, I don't know. My favorite thing before, <laughs> I got to tell you, uh, go watch, if you didn't see the announcement, go watch the announcement. So it's all of these men in uh, top hats and tuxedos. As they do. But, but. <laughs> the son of Pennsylvania uh, Governor uh, Josh Shapiro was there, and he's a teenager. So it's a sea of black and white, and he's wearing a bright blue hoodie, and he's looking at these middle-aged white men, just kind of like <laughs> with this rodent, and he looks like every teenager that would be forced to go there, like, why am I here? <laughs> yeah. Poor kid. Now... Uh, I look at the holidays, I, I, you know, on my radio show, at the start of it, I always, it's a tradition, I list off all of the wacky holidays. Every day there's like hot chocolate day, there's this day. Today, not only, this is no joke, not only is it Groundhog Day, but, but it's Marmot Day. Marmot Day. And, and that means more to us here at the Jason Show than mm -hmm. Groundhog Day because, mm -hmm. and especially if you're a new watcher, mm -hmm. uh, Kendall, point out your friend there, there's a marmot behind uh, Kendall. Now... Oh. 
What is he? I've got to fix the shrubbery. I don't know. There we go. Um, now was a good time. Now was a good shrubbery? time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Two things. First, I kind of want to explain it. We no. never really explain it, but no. I think it should just stand for itself. But I will tell you how that happened. Our boss, uh, the big boss, not middle management, but the big boss, our president, Marion Mim Davy Kessler Carrington Colby. Uh, she's our president. We always have to wave to her. Mm -hmm. yep. By the way, audience, when you exit the building, if you look up into the tower, mm -hmm. she'll wave to you as you uh, exit. Oh, she cousins. waves to the little people. Your anyway. She, when we were uh, freshening up the set, mm -hmm. she, I've worked for this woman since I was 22. She likes to pray, uh, play pranks. She snuck onto the set mm -hmm. and she put the marmot there to see how long it would take us to figure out it was there. It took us a season and a half. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so now we just leave it because yeah. it's a subconscious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like it's a. Mm -hmm. It is. It is a subconscious signal to all of you watching, this isn't a normal show. No. I think they knew that anyway, but yeah. Just let's in get, case. Just in case, let's get started. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it. Here we go. So, first up. Just when you thought there was peace between former Flames Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears, things take a big turn and it calls for... Oh, no, she didn't. That's right, our legendary, uh, our legendary drama horn. So here's the deal. Justin Timberlake performed a, a birthday concert in New York on Wednesday before singing his song, Cry Me a River, uh, clue number one, uh, which is likely about his breakup with Britney. Likely? Come on, look at the video. Anyway, he had some words to share with the audience. Look. I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize to absolutely nobody. Whoa. Yep, so if you missed it, if you missed it, he said he's going to take the opportunity to apologize to absolutely blank and nobody. Yeah. Uh, now, it, I scared executive producer Jeff there for a second. He thought I was going to say the real. Yeah. Well, anyway, he said he apologizes to no one. It comes just. Why is this news? Well, because it comes just a couple days after Brittany got on social and apologized about some of the things that she said about Justin in her book. She even complimented his new song. Well, it didn't take Brit Brit long to respond to Justin's response to Britney. Oh, so she shared a picture of a basketball hoop on Instagram saying, someone told me someone was talking crap about me on the streets. Do you want to bring it to the court or will you go home crying to your mom like you did last time? Spicy. Now look, I've cried to my mom many times. I, I you know. <laughs> Hopefully not today. She's in the audience. I'm going to say, yeah, but, uh, yeah. But. If the show goes down the crapper, I will cry to her. But, yeah, anyway. Right there. This isn't, a, let's be serious, this isn't a good look for him. He had a little bit of goodwill. People almost, like, almost thought, okay, if Britney forgives him, and then he did this, what a bonehead move. I don't get it either. I'm like, you could have just said nothing. Nothing. <laughs> like, literally nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. My buddy Alexis on the radio show had a really good point. She said, he could have just been, if you wanted to make a statement, why not make a classy statement of like, you know what? Perhaps she shared something that I would have preferred for both of us to keep mm -hmm. private. But, you know, it's her truth. That would have been semi-classy and we would kind of have understood it. Right. But, dude, you, dude. Thank you. Hi, hi. Justin, you have an album to sell. You have a tour to sell, and you're going to do this? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine his marketing team right now? Oh, oh no. wor one of the worst jobs this week to be his marketing team. And it's like, you're married happily, you have a cute little family. Like, let's just chip a burp. Yeah. Chip a park it. And you look like you do. I mean, are you kidding me? Right? God gave with both hands with you. Be, lo be grateful. Ugh. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> next up from <laughs> next up from Britney versus Justin to Larry David versus Elmo. That's right. Ridiculous. Check out this is one of my favorite things of the week. Check out what happened on the Today Show. Look. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. oh, 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 oh my gosh. Oh, 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 o
So there's Larry David. Larry, <laughs> look at Al Roker. Roker can't believe it. Larry David was being, uh, was waiting to be interviewed when he jokingly tried to muzzle Elmo. Uh, as you can see, look at, look at Al. Everybody was shocked. Yeah. So David later on uh, apologized, which Elmo accepted. But Larry, Larry seemed to then take back his apology on Seth Meyers. Look. You want to tell us what happened with Elmo, Larry? Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did it. Yeah, I, uh, I, Elmo was talking. Yeah. Okay. I was waiting to be interviewed, and Elmo was. He was going on about uh, mental health, and, uh, and I approached him and I throttled him. <laughs> there you go. I couldn't take it. You couldn't take it. Yeah. And you know what? What? I would do it again. <laughs> You're looking at executive producer Jeff in the future. That's right. Yeah, right now, actually, yeah. <laughs> the, fi the final season of Larry's uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm premieres this weekend. You look totally disturbed. I'm horrified. What? I no, it's a joke, but little kids were watching and it's Elmo. The kids are watching the Today Show? They could be, because Elmo was I mean, on. You're right. Uh, Dar and I did watch uh, Katie and Matt together. I watched I mean, the Today you know. Show when I was a kid. I don't uh, yeah, know. I, 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 like am I, I did. I did play Today Show. I was like, hi, I'm Brian Gumble. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Hashtag nerd. Yeah. <laughs> Lots more to come. As we go to break, we have four people celebrating their birthday with us. They got a birthday pin, a sash, up to $20, a free play in Grand Casino. We love Grand Casino. Happy birthday, friends. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. And let's be clear, my mom isn't here for me. My mom is here. No, no. 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 She's here because Tamara uh, from Bargain Mansions is here. Yeah. That's right, yeah. <laughs> she... <laughs> the, my mom walked into the studio, and the first thing she said to executive producer Jeff, uh, Tamara's still here, right? I... Otherwise, I'm leaving. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm leaving. I was like, hey, Mom, I'm here. Just FYI. <laughs> Welcome back. Jimmy Kimmel does it again. He took time Thursday night to poke fun. Oh, this is my favorite thing. To poke fun at newscasters for doing the most cliche thing ever. Look at this. Once again, as February arrives for the 85th year in a row, our nation's newscasters cannot believe it. Can you believe it? It's already February. Goodbye, January. February 1st. Hard to believe January's in the rearview mirror now. Hard to believe it's already February. Hard to believe we've rolled into February. February? Can you believe That's it? That's crazy. February. Yes, can you believe it? February 1st. That is hard to believe. February. Hard to believe? February 1st. Can you believe that? February. Can you, can you believe it? No. February. Can you believe it? Can you believe it's already February? Can you believe it's already February? Can you believe it's February? Can you believe it's February? That's <laughs> I can't it. believe it. We'll say that on March 1st, too. I think Amber's trying to get on Jimmy Kimmel. Is that, yes, is that what you're we're doing? all going to so. do it later in, in, in unison. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. <laughs> and it worked. And it worked. Kendall, can you believe it's February? Groundhog Day? I uh, know. More dish for you now. Let's talk a little television. NBC is ready to suit up. Uh, the Peacock just ordered a spinoff of Suits Woo! called Suits. Yeah. <laughs> called Suits LA, <laughs> original, Ooh. yeah, yeah. Uh, Want to be in that meeting. Uh, it will follow, it's gonna follow a group of new characters, but will be in the same universe as the original. This comes after Suits became an unexpected bonanza, a hit last year on Netflix. People in the US streamed nearly 58 billion minutes of the show in 2023. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. 
I contributed to those minutes. Okay, how many? I, a lot. Oh. Okay. I jumped on the wagon. I did not watch Suits when it was in uh, when it's when it was in its original run in, no. on USA. Did you? No. That's not your really genre anyway. No, I would have watched it for Meghan Markle, and that's about it. Yeah, I know. I'd have been like, what'd she look like before she was a princess? Yeah, Meghan was great. Meghan's great. Mm -hmm. I love the show, but here's my thing. I guess it's kind of like NCIS. It's not the same right. cast, but they're in the same universe. They do do that. With they shows. do do that. Yes. And like Chicago, well, they're CSI. all interlinked, though. Yeah. Chicago, fire, med, vet clinic, you know, all of those. <laughs> Postal emergency, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But this will be, none of the, cro there will be no crossover. So why no. call it Suits? Suits is Suits because of the cast. You know what I mean? Other than that, it's just L.A. law. You know, right. that's what it really is. I don't know. This is not the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No. Is, we're not doing that with lawyers. They, they should have just brought back L.A. law if you're going to do that anyway. <laughs> Next up, Netflix is showing off its new shows for the new year. The streamer offered up a first look at original shows coming in 2024, including the return of Squid Game. Look at the trailer here. Yeah. That uh, the scene shows what happens right after the end of season one mm -hmm. of Squid Game, which I loved. Not for everybody. Mm -mm. Not for everybody, but mm -hmm. was for me. I love you didn't watch it, did you? I didn't. I like oh. sword fighting. <laughs> That's the only kind of blood movies I like. <laughs> what? Like Vikings Valhalla? Totally fine with all the blood. That show, not so much. <laughs> Speaking of Netflix, I uh, I finished Griselda last night. Ooh. Oh, mom, are you watching it yet? You are. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love to recommend drug lord shows to my mom. Yeah. It's healthy. But relationship. Yeah, mom, you'll love it. <laughs> we didn't have that kind of thing in Indiana. Yeah. I love Indiana. I'm just saying, don't get mad at me. I live in Indiana. Um, but no, the end of Griselda. It, from t now that I'm done, from yeah. tip to tail, so good. that show, I know, I, I know why it's number one. Mm. Sofia Vergara, she better be nominated and win an Emmy. She's outstanding in this. I want to watch that. You do. Kendall, you would love it. I, I know. I will love it. Stop. Stop talking immediately. I'm going to move on. Yes. <laughs> It's a little private joke between Kendall and I. That's right. Uh -huh. Netflix also shared a first look. Kendall, listen. Bridgerton, season three. Look. Your eyes. The most remarkable shade of blue. And yet somehow they shine even brighter when you are kind. I, got, I might say something like that if you were a, a suitor. Mm. Well, that was uh, rather direct. Um, um. <clears throat> okay. Part three. The first, uh, the first part of season three premieres in May. <laughs> I know you love this. I'm glad that you do. Mm -hmm. I jumped off after Bridgerton season one. I know. I think a lot I know, of people I know, I know, audience. I have friends that love season two. I did not. Yeah. Anthony's story was great. I loved the chemistry, but it was not the original season chemistry with yeah. Daphne. Um, we'll see what this is like. We know these characters a lot more. Usually it's one of the characters you won't know who they're going to pair up with. This time we know them both, which will make things interesting. And Penelope, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah. May be the woman behind the whole thing. Like Lady Whistledown yeah. is her. The gossip columnist. Yeah. So you find that out in one of the episodes. Yeah. But. And, and speaking of TV, coming up Monday, uh, we're watching Feud. I'll give you my review yes. of that over there on Netflix. Okay. I The performances. Go watch it. That's your homework over the weekend. Go watch Feud, and we'll talk about it on Monday. There we go. We're the only talk show that gives you homework. Uh, next up. <laughs> Next up, this is just, we debated, because, you know, we try to just make everything happy on the show, but we got to sometimes cover stuff that's, ugh. This is just sad. We're getting a new look 
uh, at Wendy Williams, thanks to an upcoming documentary that's going to be on Lifetime. It's called Where is Wendy Williams? And it tells the former talk show host's side of the story. This is this is Wendy. This isn't someone doing it unauthorized after being placed under a guardianship. Look at this. She was put in front of a judge and given a guardian. That was when they took her away from us. I have no money. And I'm going to tell you something. If it happens to me, it could happen to you. As her family, we were all sitting on the sidelines watching. And she was crying out for help. Did you drink this whole thing today? Keep it there. Okay. Keep it there. My mom, she always talks about how she wants to work. But I feel as though she's worked enough. She has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue. This is all too much. Go! Bye! I have no idea where we are. This doesn't look like anything familiar. I think she's losing memory. Have you guys noticed that? How dare him? I control men. I wait one thirty-eight. Anybody could look at her and tell this is not just alcohol. There's something more going on. It just... It makes me sad, you know, it really does. Wendy, and I hope, yeah, I'll, I'll save my commentary for a minute. Wendy's son and sisters are featured in the documentary as well as they battle the Guardians over uh, the health of Wendy. It's a two-part series that's going to air February 24th and 25th on Lifetime. I hope, I know that she's involved, but my goodness, if you're in that state, mm -hmm. I'm not making a joke. Is she really involved? I hope they really got her permission. And also, I hope they don't, t I hope this isn't a, um, like a carnival situation situation where let's make this documentary so we can stare at her. I hope they do this uh, in some effort to help her. Hope Lifetime isn't just doing this or the producers aren't doing this to take advantage and make it a gawkery situation. Right. I really, I think it's all, I, mm -hmm. no matter what you think of her, no matter what you think of her, if she, her show and her style was never your cup of tea. You never, no, you, no one ever wants to see somebody. She was at the top of her game. I mean, yep. man, let me tell you, mm -hmm. uh, being in this, this realm of uh, daytime uh, talk shows, it's hard to break through. It's hard to have a hit. It's hard to maintain it. And Wendy did what our show, she started as a test and exploded on television and became a phenomenon. And, and um, by the year before the downfall, she was on CBS Sunday morning being profiled. She was everywhere. It's just horrible to mm -hmm. see. Horrible to see. Next, let's lighten things up before we take a break. She's the OG New York housewife. Many want to see return to the franchise, including me. But in a radio interview this week, Jill Zarin <laughs> revealed she wouldn't even consider coming back to Bravo or the housewives. Here's why. They didn't ask me to do it. I would not have done it had they asked me, and I think that's that's why they did not ask me. I do think you they knew do I would. One now why would you have done it go back? and take that paycheck? Um, because I had some other projects already in the works, and I knew that if I did anything on Bravo, that with the rules that they have, you're not allowed to do any other show oh. or film anything within six months of the last episode of the airing of. The, and if you don't know when it's going to air, so how could I have committed to all these other shows that I'm doing? Um, right. If I had done that a year ago, I'd still be locked in the contract right now. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Jill. Jill also told Jeff Lewis it was her idea to send the New York Housewives on a vacation and film it. Is that Scary Island? That's, well, it, they the return to Scary Island. Instead okay. of doing a series, it makes economical sense for Bravo, too. Um, let's not pay the women for 12 episodes. Mm -hmm. Let's send them to an island. <laughs> we'll tape six episodes and pay them each $100,000 for six days of work. It's actually brilliant. You get six episodes, the, the budget stays low, and the women get to stay relevant in the house. Housewives franchise. It's actually, and I watched, you know I love Housewives and right. I love New York. Jill Zarin's best friend lives here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I've always loved Jill and I always will. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the OG man. I love it. Jill Zarin. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to take a break. My mom's favorite guest and more when we return. Back in a moment. Coming up in just a few minutes. Getting ready for the big game, getting ready for some chips and dip. And Stephanie Hansen has some great recipes that your guest will love. And then from HDTV's Bargain Mansion, Tamra is going to be joining me live in the studio. That and more when we come back.
Super Bowl showdown is set, but you don't have to be a football fanatic like me to enjoy the big game. <laughs> For some of us, it's not about the football. It's all about chips, dips, and all of that stuff. Joining us now uh, is the host of Taste Buds on Fox Local, the Emmy Award winning Stephanie Hansen. Hey! Hello. Hello. Good, How are you doing? You and I, we're not big sports ball people. No, I am. I'm very. I actually am going to watch this year for a oh, variety yes. of reasons. I love that it's in Vegas. Travis and Kelsey. Travis and Kelsey. Yeah. I love the fact that they've turned Travis and Kelsey. That sounds like a country oh, band. Wait, it's Taylor and Kel Travis. Taylor, yeah. Taylor and Travis. TNT. That sounds like a law firm in Nashville. See, I don't yeah. even barely know no, who no. he is, but I just love their and love did, affair. And did you see they turned the Luxor into a Dorito? They put a giant <laughs> sticker on the Luxor, the pyramid. Ah, uh, that works for me. Speaking, as you can see. I was gonna say, see, I I know what I'm doing. Yeah. They, they don't give these shows to monkeys. I, I yeah. So that what are we? The transition. That's right. What are we doing? Okay, first of all. I made some dips for the Super Bowl, Super Party, big gig, big game, whatever we need to call it for official purposes. Yeah. Okay, so I started out and I got these pickles from a listener, a watcher of the show. Really? Yeah. He, a man named David sent me these pickles and he wanted me to have you try the pickles. So I was like, well, why don't we use David's pickles and make some hot Pickle party dip. Because everybody wants hot pickle dip. Did we check David's pickles? We did. did we, you know, I did we already, run them through Fox they were Security? Very okay. Yes. So I was like, okay, I'll use, I use some of mine in here too. Okay. Because David's were kind of hot, but hot party pickle dip. So if you can get a shot of this, this is, it's cream cheese. It is mozzarella. That's good. Oh, yeah. It's still, it's topped with potato chips, just like your good Midwestern casserole would be. And then you eat it with potato chips or spicy chips. Okay. So that's dip recipe may, number one. May I, may I have yeah. a little bit? Okay. You have to have a good solid chip, okay? Because you want the dip to stand yeah, up. Yeah, you, to you the don't chip. want you want a sturdy yeah. chip. You're gonna go first, ladies mm -hmm. first. Go. <laughs> go ahead. I mean, is it good? It's beyond good. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean. Oh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. What's not to love about? Hot cheese and pickles. That's really good. The recipe on Stephanie's website. And again, you did not use David's pickles, right, for that? I used some. Okay. I wanted to use some because his were hot. Yeah. And I had pickles too because I'm a gardener and a canner and mine were a little milder. So, okay. so there that, we go. So pickle dip number one. And use the, if you can find it, it's kind of a Midwestern thing, but the old Dutch spicy pickle chip. Okay. Old Dutch, if you're here in the Midwest. Sorry, Orlando. Okay, what's next? Okay, this is a little bit different. This is a ranchy. It takes all the flavors of a buffalo wing and puts it into a dip. And I don't like blue cheese, so I'm ranchy. So it's ranchy. It's it's um, Frank's Red Hot Saucy. Okay. It's chickeny, and it's cheesy. Hey, that's Jeff's word, chickeny. Yeah, that's chickeny. right. Executive producer Jeff. So this one you could eat on like a celery stick, like real. I like triscuits. I also like. Tortilla chips, what do you think? Um, what are you feeling? Let's do a, a Triscuit for this one, okay. for this bad boy. Can I just dig in? Yeah. Okay, you too. It's so, you too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I made these this morning. I'm kind of a hot mess because I literally came in the studio like 30 seconds ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we both shouldn't have eaten at the same time. Yeah, yeah. we should have. <laughs> you know why we should have eaten at the same time? Because when we can both go like this together, That's bam! Right. Boom! Woo! <laughs> You look, oh. like you, you look like you're having an episode there. I like. am having an episode. It's called a delicious sode. Yeah. It's a yummy sode. It is really it's good. It's yummy, yummy, yeah. yummy. Oh. I want to just like, I want to put that on everything. You're scaring me today. Okay, I know. I'm a little amped up. You I are. I was driving 80 miles was, an hour with was, my hot dips in the car. She was, uh, <laughs> she was a mess. Let me just pull, we like to pull back the curtain. She was a mess. Poor Bjorn, who's like 14 years old. Uh, he's, this is his, only his first his week. First week. His first week, he now has several more gray hairs thanks and to I this one. Yeah. I couldn't even text him because I had the hot dips balancing. Yeah. So I couldn't reach from my phone. But all kidding aside, uh, yeah. refresh again. What's all in this? Okay, ranch. Chicken, Frank's Red Hot Sauce, 
cream cheese, a little mozzarella. Okay. And then you melt that all together. You get it all whiskey with your green onions. That is a really delicious dip. And these are super easy. And you know, you just like put in a cap. I like you're, you're like walking over to the game. You're just taking your whole personal pan size dip. <laughs> this could be for one. Okay. Or you no, but you really could. It would be super cute if you were having a party to get like the little cast the little iron crocs, skillets. The little, yeah. Or the little crocs, the little stob crocs. Yeah. And each person could have their own little pickly portion. So there's no double dippings. Well, yeah. And it depends on how well you like your friends or if you're with your family, that's a little different. If I'm with you, you can share my dip anytime. <laughs> I would share your dip. Do you want to share a hot dish nope, next? Nope, we got to go. <laughs> uh, you can find these recipes at stephaniesdish.com. Uh, a little bit later, a Jason show, well, actually right after the break, uh, these people thought it would be a great idea for me to try really gross fish uh, right after the break. Back in a moment. Okay, now I'll try it. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> Stephanie's still here. Uh, it's one of the... She won't leave. Yeah. Usually I'm happy about that. <laughs> but um, I still have the corn chip in my... Anyway, it's one of the surprising recent food trends. Thanks in part to TikTok, tend fish is growing in popularity. Port Portugal is known for its tend fish, and last year, executive producer Jeff bought some tend fish. How many times can I say that in an intro? Uh, back to fish. America. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another Jason Show taste test. So here we go. Now, do you, do, before, no, no, this is what I love. Um, so shockingly, Kendall doesn't have to be a part of this segment. Well, I mean, it's only me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, where are we? Do you, do you like tinned fish? I do like tinned fish. I ate sardines and kipper snacks growing up. I don't know, up north, that was what we ate. I, I like, there's a hot chili fish now, a company called Fishwife that's from the United States that I like there. Fish, but these are really beautiful tins. Uh, I don't know if you can see We didn't that. have tinned fish in Indiana. Yeah, I don't know. No, no. You okay. didn't? No, no, my mom would never allow this. Okay, um, so, what are we starting with? Okay, I think the first one is a sardine. With lemon. With lemon. Has, a sardine with lemon. Oh, this is going to be delicious. So I'm going to give you oh. kind of a... <laughs> are you already feeling... It's going to be surprisingly good. Oh, good Lord. Go right in there, sister. Yeah. Right, they're great. I love tin fish. It's delicious. <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Just do that thing where you just, like, count to three and swallow quickly. <laughs> That was funny. Okay, the next one is mackerel, and I'm I'm concerned that if you didn't like the sardines, because I think the mackerel's a little. My fishier. mother is physically covering her face. <laughs> this segment is so horrifying. My mother is covering her face. Okay. Okay. As your friend, I'm not gonna make you eat that one. <laughs> but we're gonna make BB eat it. Yeah! Come here, BB. Money Give it up for our new producer, Bjorn. Yes. Have you ever had this before? No. Oh, it's delicious. Remember, I love you. There we go. It's a big Welcome to the Jason piece. Show, BB. This is your initiation. It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. You are so fired. Get out of here. Get out of here. You and I. Okay. You just, you just can't find good help nowadays. A week ago today, you and I ate mussels together. Oh, I love mussels. Okay, so here we go. Here is. But what's special about these? It is a mussel, and it is smoked, and it's in olive oil. Yum. Okay, you know what? I, I'm, I, I'm okay with this. Okay, let's just give it a go. Oh, 
a little oily, a little smoky, like maybe your mom's day old cigarettes. <laughs> it's not the best. And it's getting worse. <laughs> Like a Ryan Murphy show, it gets worse as it goes on. Yeah, I think we need a spicy pickle chip yeah. to really down Anyway. That. Oh, now she comes. <laughs> These are from my mom. They're from Dar. She said you'll need them. Mints. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Stream taste buds right now on Fox Local. Download the app on your smart TV. Oh, my God. I apologize to Tamara. I, I smell like this uh, Pike Place in Seattle. Anyway, we'll be right back. Back in a moment. Oh, my God. That was awful. I have never purposely left a mint in my mouth for a guest, <laughs> but I'm going to here. We all know how satisfying it is to watch the before and after transformation on a house. Our next guest has her own home renovation show, all about bringing large, neglected homes back to life. Look. Originally, this home was covered in a dull battleship gray, and it negated the architectural beauty of this home. Now, with the black house perfectly set on top of a hill, with a pond in the front yard and acres of views in every direction. The home is like a modern masterpiece with exceptional curb appeal. Yep, that's Sparkin' Mansions on the Magnolia Network. Audience, please give it up for the reason my mom's here today, the host of the show, Tamara Day, everyone. How are you? I'm doing great. Couple things. First, uh, thanks for putting up with my smell. Um, thanks for being here, and thanks for being here so my mom could be happy today. I Thank you, that. yes, yeah. <laughs> my mom was determined to be here. Anyway, how you doing? I'm doing great. Do you like, uh, you know, uh, check your local listings. Uh, Tamara may be coming to a city near you for uh, those watching in Chicago and Orlando, Iowa. Do you like doing these types of shows, the live shows? Absolutely, I love it. You know, this is when I get to hear everybody's problems, and so I can help solve them. Yeah, right? and you get to connect with people that because Absolutely. they know you, they right. think they. But now you get a chance to actually interact with them. Exactly. When, when you go to like something like the, the Home and Garden Show, what what is a common question? What's one of the most common questions oh, you gosh. get from someone like my mom? Home and remodeling show, yeah. You know, it's it's a variety of questions. The biggest one I would say is, what's next? What's the biggest tip you can give us as to when we're doing our house? What are we going to do next? We've seen this. But what should I do that's not trendy, yeah. not too, like, stuck in a time zone? Like, oh, like, white kitchens, are they still in? Oh, or, that's a big one. Is that a big one right <laughs> that's now? That's a big question. What do you yes. think? I think they're timeless. It's always going to be happening. I just think there's new ways to reinvent it in a way that's a little bit brighter and less basic like your neighbor. With, uh, season, you're coming up on season six, right? We are. Can you believe it? No, I does cannot. It, did it go, does it go fast for you? It does. It's like a blink. And I watched the first episodes. And yeah. Oh, keep it talking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, they're just rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like I watched the episodes and my children were this big and now they're this big. And it's really crazy. I didn't even, it's like you're all, it's kind of like home movies for you. It absolutely is. What is, what is the thing? And again, you can go see Tamara this weekend if you're here locally at the home and remodeling show. Um, if, what is the thing? that would shock people the most? Because we love these shows. I mean, home remodeling shows, hello, there's several networks, Magnolia being one of them. It's a, it's a cultural phenomenon. What is the thing that you think fans of this genre would be most shocked to learn? Well, I get a lot of questions like, do you actually do all the things you, yeah. you do? Like, I, I do the demo, I do the, the design, everything, and I actually do. I have a black eye to prove it. Do you? I do. <laughs> it's covered really well, but now Thank I can you. see it. Now yeah. you see it, right? Like what did we you were do? demo this week. We were ripping stuff out and got bonked in the face. It's just part of the jam. See, this proves it. She does it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? <laughs> really? Oh my God. So it, the answer would be 
that you, it's yes a television it's a hyper version of reality but right. it's reality for you it is reality for me I'm I'm in there doing the demo do I do all the demo absolutely not there's a lot that happens and there's only one me yeah and you were you're based in Kansas City I am what's what's Kansas City I, you know what I've never been to Kansas City oh it's fantastic yeah. and I mean this is the year to come visit like uh, uh, hello are you, are you <laughs> oh you must be are we're you so large. excited so excited what is the city like right now it's just a lot it's so exciting. I mean, who doesn't love love, right? Yeah. Like, this is fantastic. Well, mean, there are some people that are just so bothered by it that it's, but I it's fun. It's fun. It's happy. We need a little happy. Yeah. Right? Oh, like, we do. It's a good thing. Okay. Uh, Magnolia Network, Chip and Joanna, what are they like? You got to tell me. What's, what's Chip and Joanna really like? They are everything you think they are. Mom, did you hear that? Thank you. Yeah. Really. Yeah. They really are. And let me just tell you, her I'm hair. asking for the audience because I know you want to know. So yeah, they are lovely. They are so fun and just kind, generous people. But let me just tell you, her hair is so exceptional. Really? <laughs> yes. Exceptional. I love that. Hair. That was the fun fact you gave us. Really? Yes. Gorgeous. She does look like she like hot oil treatments. I yeah. don't know. It's yeah. perfection. It is. Yes. That perfection. doesn't shock me at all. You have good hair too. Well, thank you. Can I ask, uh, as someone with a show? What was the moment? You don't just get a show. I mean, you right. start, correct me if I'm wrong, started on um, DIY. HGC. It started on DIY, HG, HG, and then you moved over to Magnolia. Yes. What is the call like? I always love when people take us there because this won't happen to the majority. Right. What is that call like when you get picked up and you're going to be on, let's just fast forward to HGTV or Magnolia. What is that day like for you? Um, kind of crazy and surreal, and it just doesn't feel real until it actually is on, right? Like, yeah. you're just kind of doing your life. It's with a whole crew, and then all of a sudden, it's on actual television. And then people start recognizing you at Home Depot. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The Home Depot, the Home Goods, the Targets, those are my people. Don't you love Home Goods? <laughs> yes. Home Goods is like a home. Okay, I'm sorry. We got to go. I could talk about Home Goods. <laughs> Give it up for Tamara, everybody. Look for. Look for Bargain Mansions. Look for Bargain Mansions on the Magnolia Network and streaming on Max. And if you're watching us locally, like I said, she's going to be at the Minneapolis Home and Remodeling Show at U.S. Bank Stadium this weekend. We're going to take a break. My mom's going to get a picture, and we'll be right back. Back in a moment. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. And you got to... So much happened in that commercial break. I can't even tell you. Time to meet our last JVIP of the week. It's Susie Prady from Minneapolis. Susie appreciates. Stephanie, we're on the we're on the air, Steph. Oh my good lord. Susie appreciates the lightness of the show and especially the mailbag, where she can learn more about Kendall and I. I love you, Susie. Susie gets a mug in her to win the monthly grand prize that includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture, and a $250 gift certificate to renew. Met Spa. We're going to go so Stephanie can wrap up her conversation. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Don't forget to come see us next week. To get tickets, go to eventbrite.com. Eventbrite.com. Um, hi. Um, can I just say... Um, that I look lovely? Thank you. No. Um, you, yeah. Thank you. That was what he was going to say. Let's see here. You mysteriously disappeared in one of our segments. I think it was which oh, segment? The fish tasting segment. I, uh, yeah. I just wanted you to enjoy yeah. it without me yeah. hovering. Um, usually, if it's like a wine segment uh -huh. or uh, or anything uh, uh, food. like a food, yeah. you're all up in there. But yep. so we thought it would be fun. <laughs> just grab. Yes, I'm you not are. eating that. It's, no, yeah. I'm not. No, it's, it's, we have a mint when you're I'm done. not eating. I'm, can we pretend I'm pregnant still? Can we pretend I'm still pregnant? You should do it, you please. No, you. I'm not pregnant. That was yeah. funny. I'm not having another baby right now. I'm not going to make you do anything you don't want to do, but for ratings, it would be really nice. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm done. I'm leaving. I knew that would happen. <laughs> Monday on the show. Monday on the show, a Grammy fashion recap with our fashion expert, Engineer Brad. <laughs> right now.
now, though, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next week.